What is International Democracy Day? International Democracy Day started in 2007 as a global celebration of the concept and ideals of democracy in the world. Uh, what do you hope that uh, you can take away from today's event? I think today the main takeaway will be the ideas that young people come up with in order to improve democracy in Bhutan. As I said, democracy isn't just about whether you vote or not. It's about the way that you participate in the processes that are going on all the time, all over the country. Political processes, local community decisions, even interactions within your family. Who does the dishes? Who, who sweeps up the lawn? Who takes out the garbage? All of those are democratic processes. What is your vision on women's participation in, in democracy in Bhutan? Thank you for that question. It's really interesting. And I would like, actually, to ask you the same question. As a Bhutanese woman, what is your vision for women's participation in Bhutan's democracy? I feel women can do better than the men. It's not like I'm uh, trying to differ differentiate or something like that, but like women are more focused. I think uh, a woman can make a vast difference in a country because at home, uh, from home only, a woman starts their, uh, what, they know how to govern or how to take care of the family. They can empathize and all. So uh, being a political leader, I think a uh, leader should possess all these characters, like the qualities, to understand the other person, to empathize. Uh, only if you can understand the other person and put yourself in the other person's uh, shoe, then only you can uh, bring changes about uh, in the country as well as for the people. For the people, that's what I think. Uh, it is a pleasure to have a conversation with you. Uh, and when Thirin asks about the, your understanding of democracy, you did mention about vote being one of the aspects of democracy. Is voting or is democracy all about voting? Uh, if you could share your views on it. I think voting is one of the most visible manifestations of democracy in a society. Voting is the freely expressed will of people exercised through the ballot box. It's uh, enormously significant, as we see in many countries uh, as they gain their independence. The most important thing and symbolic milestone that they cross are the first elections. But voting is not all about, is not the only thing in democracy. It is not the only way that people can express their will. Uh, in my country, we have a very strong tradition of letter writing to our elected officials. So if you have a proposal or if you don't agree with something that they've done or a position that they've taken, you write to them. When I was younger, we used to write letters and put a stamp on them and send them off in the post. But now, of course, we use social media. We tweet them. We send them emails. Um, we collect signatures online for petitions to try to uh, make clear to them what the opinions of the group of people are on a particular issue. In that light, could we share some of your experiences uh, as a young girl when you voted for the first time? Yes, I was thinking this morning about the first time that I voted. I was 18 years old. Voting for the first time, for me, was a transition to adulthood in terms of making up my own mind about what I felt about the future of my country and my own political beliefs. I grew up in a mixed family. My father supported one party and my mother supported the other. And so for my whole life, I heard very lively discussion and debate about who was doing the good job and who was not doing a good job and what uh, different sides of almost every issue. These were all discussed around our dinner table every night. So when I voted for the first time, because in my country there were only two parties on the ballot, I had to make my own choice about which party to support. And for me, that was a moment of passage. You asked me about the first time I voted. Now I'd like to ask you, you've voted, right? I voted uh, for the candidate as well as ideology I supported. When we say that uh, voting is a part or, as uh, you mentioned earlier, as a manif uh, one of the manifestations of democratic practice, so one should think of choice before we really exercise our franchise to whom we vote and for what mandate or for what we vote for. So in that light, uh, voting for the sake of voting might not suffice the need or cater the need of democracy. 
So, yeah, uh, right now, since I could vote for uh, the second parliamentary election, I'm quite uh, privileged to have this uh, opportunity, and it all the credit goes to our visionary and selfless uh, monarch, particularly to the fourth and fourth, uh, fifth kings. So, I'm really indebted to the reforms they have initiated and the environment that we get to live in. Now, what message would you pass to Burmese youth so as to involve in democratic process? Because our democracy is still in fledgling state and it is in transition. And uh, beside this, the pop majority of the population is youthful. So how youth can engage in democratic transition and development? I've worked in a number of countries where the democratic process has been in, its, uh, in a youthful state. And I think one of the things that um, young people in particular struggle with is the idea that a democracy does not mean everybody in society gets everything that they want. Uh, democracy is a process of discussion and debate, and most importantly, compromise. So collective decisions, they may not favor one group or the other, to the extent that they would like. But well done, collective decisions favor the majority of people. So I think that is the true spirit of, uh, or the true outcome of the democratic process. But I think, um, whereas when I was young, it was very difficult to determine whether a majority of people were being uh, supported a decision. But with new technologies, with the push of a button, we are having people vote on decisions all the time. So to give an example, the UN, to determine the next global sustainable development goals, has instituted something called the My World Survey. And people around the world, for the first time, are directly voting about what they feel are the most important political priorities to be taken up for the next 25 years. And this is unheard of in the history of international relations. Before those decisions were taken, usually by inputs of experts or different political leaders coming and talking and making uh, position statements. But now, people themselves vote. So when you look at the responses for Bhutan, it's fascinating. You can go to the My World website and you can sort them by age group um, and by gender, and you can see how male men and women feel differently about issues, how young people may feel differently about issues than older people. One really interesting thing uh, that I saw coming out of the My World survey is that young people in Bhutan feel that gender equality is a much higher priority than the older generation. So when you ask me to look forward to see the future of Bhutan's democracy, I see the force of young people really pushing the gender equality agenda forward so that in 10 years we will see a different face of democracy in Bhutan.